Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. Sorry my voice is a little bit froggy tonight, but I decided to do another installment in my series on why did I want this gun. Tonight, the gun that I have on the table is my Ruger Mini 14. Now there's a few reasons I wanted this gun. Uh, one of the main ones, again going back to TV and movies, childhood TV show that I used to watch as a kid was the A-Team. This was one of the guns that they used in that show. Of course, they had the one with the folding stock and the 30-round magazine, and it was polished nickel or chrome or something like that. Always looked super cool. And theirs were always set up to be fully automatic, which mine is not. But Mini 14 was one of those iconic 1980s guns from TVs. Also, there was a movie that came out called uh, In the Line of Duty, The FBI Murders, I believe was the name of it. It was about the 1986 Miami-Dade shooting. Uh, that movie had been out for quite a few years. I think I might have seen parts of it as a kid, but I recently watched that not that long ago. Uh, Paul Harrell had done a video on the Miami-Dade shooting. And in that movie, um, actually in the original incident, one of the two bad guys carried a Mini-14. His was converted to fully auto, and you know that was one of the guns that he used in the shootout. So it's a pretty iconic gun. Bill Ruger designed the action on this um, from the M14 or the M1 Garand, sort of. It's kind of a, a spin-off of the M1 Garand, the M14, the M1A, but it's not a 308 or a 30 odd six. It's a 223 or a 556. If you actually look at the receiver on this gun, it says 223 Cal, C A L, which a lot of people actually mistook for 223 Remington. 223 caliber is actually a 556 or a 223 shell so this shoots both the only ones that i know of that are actually stamped 223 remington are the ones that have a bull target barrel because the chambers on those are a little bit tighter and they will only take a 223 remington You can see on this receiver, this actually says Mini 14 556 NATO, and it has that nice Ruger roll mark on the receiver. So I think um, this is a 580 series gun, and 580 series just meaning the most modern rendition that they had. There were some older versions that again had been out since I think the 70s when this came out, and the older versions had a pencil barrel, they had different front sights, they were still reliable guns, they just weren't quite as accurate as the 580 and up series, which this is. I think my serial number starts with 583. This is a pretty modern gun, so it has a little bit thicker barrel, um, and it has different sights on it than the original ones would have had. And again, the roll marking on the back of the receiver says 5.56 NATO instead of 223 Cal, because it was just one of those things that I think confused a lot of people. If you actually read any of the original literature for these, the manuals and everything else did say you could use 556 and 223 interchangeably. However, a lot of people just mistook that because it said 223 on the receiver. But another reason that I wanted this gun, besides its you know fame and its um, the fun that it had in TV shows and things like that, this is a quote unquote compliant rifle. So there are a lot of states are several states that don't particularly like um, AR-15s or AK-47s. And I bought this at a transition period in my state when they were just starting to ban new AR-15 sales. So this was something that I could readily buy that was still, even today, it's still not considered an assault rifle unless you put a pistol grip on it, which is completely asinine because just putting a pistol grip on the gun doesn't change anything about the gun other than you add a pistol grip to it. Doesn't make it any more reliable, doesn't make it any more deadly. Um, and I actually argue if you put a pistol grip on this, it really doesn't help you that much because this style hunting stock is actually very comfortable and very easy to use. All that aside, it was something that you can still buy in compliant states. It's something that most states recognize as just a regular hunting rifle. So still very easy to purchase. The ammunition is readily available. Um, even though the prices are going up a little bit. But it's kind of an American icon because, again, the action takes its 
cues from an M1 Grand or an M14 Carbine or an M1A. So I like the way the action works. It kind of has that roller. Um, let me see if I can get you up close here. It has kind of a roller lock system on it. So when you pull the bolt back, the front of the bolt actually twists to unlock. Let's see if I can do this slow enough that you can see it. You can see that bolt rotates there as it comes out of its lock position. So the action on this is very similar to what you have with an M1 Garand or an M14. And then it locks open. There's actually a button here that you push to lock it open. Uh, this particular one, it came with scope rings on it, but I have not put any type of optic on it. I actually like the sights that it came with. It has a round ring peep sight in the rear. And let me see if I can get a good shot here. It has kind of a three blade front sight on it. So pretty good sighting system. Um, you know, I'm not the most accurate shooting this. I do want to do a practical accuracy video with this again soon, just because I haven't taken it out in a while. And it seems I always get a lot of views on my mini 14 videos. It's just a fantastic gun. Um, so it's a fun shooter. You know, it's historically significant. It was in TV shows. It's fairly accurate for what it is. And you can still buy it in states that aren't really friendly with assault rifles. So it's just a great all around rifle. Prices on them have gone up quite a bit. You used to be able to buy these for, I don't know, $650 to $700, maybe a little bit less used. Now they're probably uh, eight to 850 used and they go over $1,000 new. The prices just keep going up on everything. Uh, so again, it's another one of those guns. If you see one and you see one at a good deal and you want to buy one, I would say go ahead and buy it because in today's market, you never really know what's going to happen. Also, you can get um, five round magazines for this. You can get 10 round magazines. You can get 20 round magazines. I've seen 30 round mags and 40 round mags as well. I think people even made drum mags for these things. Again, because I'm in kind of a compliant, not friendly state. Um, it came with a five round magazine when I bought it. I bought a couple of 10 round magazines and then I happened to find a whole bunch of pre-band 20 round magazines. And again, that's another good thing about this gun. It's been around for so long, you can still find pre-band magazines. I've talked about it in a few of my videos. I really recommend trying to find Ruger branded magazines because the aftermarket magazines that I've found for this really don't tend to work very good. Um, you have issues with the feed lips opening up and rounds not going fully into the chamber. So I highly recommend if you buy one of these Try to stick with Ruger factory magazines. Obviously, if you can't find Ruger factory magazines, you have to do something else. Um, I know OG's Danger Show Officer Greg just did a video on one of these this week, which is ironic because I was just planning on doing mine as well. And he talked about um, getting some Pro Mag magazines for his that he said worked fairly well. Uh, he did have some hangups in his video. And, you know, I mean, Pro Mag is kind of hit or miss. I have a bunch of Pro Mag magazines for my. Ruger American and 76239, which are the same magazines that you get for a Mini 30. And those have issues once in a while, but overall they're pretty good. So just wanted to do a little bit of a video on another one of my Why Did I Buy This Gun series guns. And this is the Ruger Mini 14. Um, and it's just a great American icon. It's a fantastic shooting rifle. It's a lot of fun. And if you ever get a chance to shoot one or buy one, I highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. Make sure you support your two-way rights. God bless America. Get out there and shoot when you can. And you remember, if somebody asks you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, you remind them that freedom is the greater good. Thanks again for